Hello, everybody, and welcome to another exciting episode of Radio Rama, where is the name implies. I'll show you how to work on radios. Sometimes other things besides radios, like stereo systems and record players and all that goody, all that goody good stuff. Mostly it's glowing vacuum tubes, but today I'm going off on a little bit of a different course. This is a Motorola, kind of a large ish in comparison. Here's a beer bottle. Kind of a largest clock radio. It's got some of that minimalist mid-century styling. And what model is it? Like it matters. Oh, the label's gone or curled up. No matter. We don't need to worry. But it's solid state, so that means we can try it out and it'll turn on immediately. If it's gonna work or not, don't know. Well, it works, but needs new filter caps. I can hear that hum. If you don't replace them, they're just going to get worse and worse. And eventually it will fail. And uh, since this is going to be going out to the general public, uh, we don't want that to happen. Because especially some of these earlier solid state units have germanium transistors. And they, ha they hadn't quite figured out how to do the protection circuits on these guys. And so if there's something shorted and it was related to the transistors, it would take them all out. And then you've got to find replacements. And uh, sometimes that's easier said than done, especially on something weird like this. I say weird because... Um, it's not so hard to find the large uh, output transistors for some of the hi-fi stereo equipment for, for little things like this. Not so much. So let's take the back off and see what's going on inside. Wow, is it dirty. Really dirty. There's the electrolytic up here, that can. And since it's solid state, it'll probably be values that I'm may or not have in stock because it's going to be, I don't know, something weird like a thousand microfarads at 25 volts or something. There's one transistor there. I'm not a transistor guy, so I really, there's one, it's so dirty. I need to take this out and get all the dust things out. There's a transistor here. There's a transistor there, but I think those are probably drivers. They're, uh, I wonder if the Transistors. Well, you know what? This whole chassis just needs to come out, and I think I might be able to take it out of the wooden cabinet entirely. At least I think so. What else could be holding it in place? Anyway, let me uh, see if I can get this chassis out. All right, so. Took the chassis outside and dusted it off, even though it's upside down, but you'll see it later. I could not find this model number online. I think it's too new. I'd probably need a physical writer's manual. Um, but I do have my capacitor checker. And I'm going to check the capacitance on these guys. And the first one, 100 microfarads. Pretty low ESR, that cap's probably good. Let's see. Next one. We'll call that 10 E, 10 microfarads and really bad ESR. That cap's bad. Um, Hundred and twenty nine microfarads. Very good ECR. That cap's probably good too. So we have one bad cap. It's this one. It's got really high ESR, so that's probably why you've got pretty severe voltage loss coming there. So I'm going to replace all of these. And let's see. I'm going to mark this. This is the bad one, and it is. We're going to replace it with a 47 microfarad capacitor. These other two, crap, I was trying to film putting my 
marker cap back on. These other two, I'm going to replace with 100 microfarad caps. I think the set will work just fine. It's not rocket science. You know what's really weird is that... Is this what I think it is? What is that? That's freaking bizarre. They're using tube sockets for transistors. What the heck? I wonder how old this is. I wonder if it's like early solid state because the way this chassis is built is very reminiscent of tubes. You've even got the proper spacing. You can put a tube here and a tube there and a tube here. Probably a tube up here. Blah, blah, blah. So you get a, you know, this is, I think this is a little early because the designers were probably tube chassis designers and they were used to this kind of construction. I mean, at least that's what I'm thinking. Uh, but anyway, first things first, I'm going to replace those. This little gray electrolytic, I wouldn't trust that either. But let's, I'll test the ESR on that one too. There's another one over here. This meter is, is pretty handy, and it's good for low-voltage stuff like this. Um, on tube stuff, you need a heavier-duty machine that puts out real voltage, like this Sprague Telemic. Um, you got to be careful with those guys, guys though, because they put out a lot of voltage, and you could get zapped, and that hurts. This is going to be a challenge. There's a lot of things going to these leads. This one alone, the one that's bad, has one, two, three, four, five, six leads. The good news is, is that there's not a lot of heat involved here, so I can stick these replacements anywhere. That right here is the rectifier. That little thing there has a diode. You can see it's got this big dropping resistor coming off of it. I'm curious about this thing. Does it have a power transformer? Like, is this, is this a hot chassis set? I don't know why, but I'm under the ignorant assumption that all solid state radios, especially little ones like this, must surely have a power transformer. I'm pretty ignorant about solid state stuff. I need to ask my friends. Man, this is a messy radio. That's the first cap replaced, so I chopped the old one out. Now all the new stuff goes here. And you can see, like, that's not going to go anywhere. I know it looks messy, but so does the original. So, one down, two to go. I'm just taking my time. Okay, is it is it really pretty looking? No. It's point-to-point -point wiring, and it never looks good. But now that we've got those replaced, probably to remove the uh, hum. All right, well, let's try it out. It's almost like psychedelic. How would you compare it? And by Betternet, the automated investing platform that helps make it easy to... Yo, right on time. Well, well, throw it out, be back tomorrow night. They won. Had it been playing another Wow. What a huge difference. Now the other thing I'm curious about, it says Visalite here. Probably there's a neon neon light in here somewhere that does that. In fact, you see that resistor. <laughs> Whoops, that's a switch. I don't know. I hope it's not one of those weird, like, electroluminescent panels. I don't think it is. I think it's just a neon bulb. But we'll find out. All right, well, I'm going to test a few more electrolytics. This one, this one's super bad. It's also off the volume control. So that could definitely have an effect on sound quality. So, mm, that one doesn't look too bad to replace. Okay, so I tested the the only other electrolytic, and it's good. The 
very low ESR. And since this is low voltage cap and this guy is for low voltage electronics, I would trust that that's fine. So we're going to just leave that cap alone. The rest of the capacitors in here are all ceramics. So they're fine. Now the next thing I'm going to do is clean all the controls. The volume and tone controls and stuff like that. Alright, so now it's time to clean the volume control and the tone control and the wafer switch. Even though it seemed like the wafer switch was doing okay. I'm going to use this uh, WD-40 contact cleaner. There was another guy that saw one of these videos and he was like, You can't spray WD-40. It's, it's like, it's, it's gasoline. It is not gasoline. Especially not the contact cleaner. But even if I was using WD-40, it's mostly kerosene. And I don't like, exactly intend to get a match out. Sometimes you can use this stuff for like cleaning gunk out too, like all this nasty shit here. Why am I doing that? No one's gonna see the inside of this. <laughs> but anyway, um, let's try it again. We've got this capacitor replaced. We've got all of these replaced. The one underneath was fine. Why is there this huge, long extension here? All right, I'm gonna solder that back to that speaker. That's jerry-rigged. I think we're slowly being conditioned. Today at CAGreatAmerica.com. Which owns the team. Let's try AM. What's this? I don't get that. You can tell it's wanting to pick something up. I wonder if it's the antenna connection. That's FM antenna. Yeah, it's like an antenna connection. Well, I don't have to look into that. And I'll be honest, like seriously, this radio is probably not worth a whole lot. I'm just going to be serious here. Like, it's more in the styling, and the people that buy this kind of stuff from us are pretty young, and they don't listen to AM radio. They'll listen to FM, sure, because there's NPR on it. But they won't listen to AM, because admittedly, around here, there's not a lot to listen to on AM talk shows, you know, religious stuff. I guess if you're religious, maybe. But anyway, um, I'll need to look into the why our AM is not working. Well, I found the problem why AM isn't working. It's not an electrical problem. It's a physical problem. Whoops. So there's supposed to be a little piece of plastic here that holds this coupling together. That's broken. I'm not sure what I can do about that. Getting a piece for that would be literally unobtainium, so I need to look into what I can possibly do here. What a stupid design this is. That that little that little flimsy piece of plastic was all that was holding that together, and it's aged and cracked. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to see if that'll come off that shaft. I'll put some super glue in between it and smish them together and hopefully that'll make it recouple. All right, so we got the uh, radio part working. I took it inside to see if there was anything lighting up and there wasn't. So I'm gonna take the clock out. Um, you pull these knobs and then it looks like, just pull back on this and it's a friction, friction fit. I think we just kind of pull it out and see if there is a neon bulb in there. If it's electroluminescent, I can't do anything about it. So let me pull these knobs off, then we'll pull the clock out and take a looky-loo. Well, I can confirm it is electroluminescent. 
and I doubt it still works. I've never actually found one of these vintage electro like electroluminescent panels to do anything. turn this light off here nope it's long gone it's a neat idea but unfortunately the material is not very long lasting that's why I think you don't see it that often I think Dodge or Chrysler rather well same company I think they put them in a few of their cars for a few years, but I think they, they encountered the same problems as everyone else, which is didn't last that long, so everyone went back to using neon bulbs because they're cheap and they last forever. Well, now that I've ascertained the electroluminescent thing doesn't work, I'm going to uh, use my Novus plastic polish to polish this up and cleaned up the interior a little bit, even though I, you know probably no one will see it. But I want to get all the scratches off of that. I'm going to clean the knobs and clean this plastic and dust off the dust bunnies off of the grill fabric. I'm trying to decide whether or not I want to add an audio input to this thing. Probably. It's got a big speaker in it, so it sounds pretty good. It's got the right styling and everything, so why not? Hey, welcome to day two, working on the Motorola. And uh, had to cut it short yesterday because my brother came over. We changed the oil in his car and did some other stuff. But I did clean all this up, uh, including the knobs. Polished the plastic. So now... Oh yeah, the other thing is that my little jury rigged plan of gluing the uh, AM condenser plastic to the shaft works. So now it's on either AM or FM. You see now that turns. So now we have AM back in operation. So it's made whole again. Uh, I'm going to add an audio input feature to this, which means going through the volume control. This is, in fact, a true hot chassis set. And so that means we can't just go directly in. We need to um, go in through an isolation transformer. Otherwise, if you don't do that, you have the potential of having 120 volts going right through the audio cable, which is a shock hazard. And electrocuting people is never a good idea. Uh, this is going to be a little bit more of a challenge because this is AM and FM. So what I ordinarily do in my videos is you'll just detach one leg from the volume control, that is the incoming uh, radio signal. But the problem is, is that that line is going to bring in both. And I'm looking at this, and if I were a betting man... I think that this connection here, like right here, is the RF signal. Because it's going here, and then this leg here, and I say that, but we've got this cap that's going across. Looks like the bottom of the of the uh, the bottom of the volume control because that goes to negative. That's chassis ground right there. So that means maybe. No, I think this is the coupling resistor going to the tone control. There's only one way to find out, and that's to disconnect this temporarily and see what happens see if the uh, signal goes away. Okay, my guess might have been good. You can see I can touch this. Three, ...which for ages has been... ...but in these last days has been revealed, and then he said what the mystery was. Ooh, tell me what the mystery was. I guess we'll have to find out later. But I think that's my ticket. I'm going to do a little test by temporarily alligating... Aller alligator clipping in an audio source to see if it comes through. Okay, so I, I did test it. That's not the right lead. That's not the top of the volume control. Apparently this is. Do not do what I am doing right now, by the way. 
especially if you're not familiar with electronics. I'm basically hot wiring this in. We can see it does work. Singing sweet by and by. Okay, so my audio input system is installed. This is the isolation transformer. And on the secondary side, which is where these two resistors go together, our right and left channels of our incoming audio go together. And that's on one side, and the other side is negative. And then the primary side of the transformer, one goes to chassis ground, and the other one goes to the top of the volume control. This is really important because what this means is that anything that could potentially come out of that volume control or through ground is going to go through that transformer first and that is going to drive everything down to a point where you, the uh, person using it will not get any sort of shock. I've also put in a little switch here. Right now it's on radio. And then if I switch this off carefully, I'm not sure if I can do this one-handed, plus I don't want to touch that chassis. You'll just have to trust me. You turn that off, then you can run your audio through. All right, so now that the electronics are done. What is that? Oh, a tiny, tiny little beetle. I really don't want to smush him. All right, see if I can blow him away. All right, I blew him away. Probably that's the equivalent of getting blown over by 300 mile an hour winds, but I've heard insects are pretty durable. So anyway, um, go over the cabinet with a little old English except I'm using old English light because I think this is kind of a nice color I don't want to darken it up just kind of like rejuvenates the finish a little bit and it also covers up the scratches and some of the UV damage this is in really good shape it looks like it just came out of the factory so I'll go over the whole thing with that and then we'll start the reassembly process This actually has a really nice sound quality. So that's with the Bluetooth, again, running through an audio, or an audio, an isolation transformer. And in the back here, we have this little switch, and that restores radio functionality. Oh. Make sure you pack a couple extra layers and... KOIT, the Nielsen Radio. Anyway, works great. Um, might let it run here for a little while just to make sure everything's happy when you have stuff that's been out of service for who knows how many years. You want to make sure that any of the other components in there aren't going to fail after being in sleep and dormant for so long. So that's what I'll do. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this episode. I enjoyed working on this because it was different and I don't do a lot of solid state things. But until the next time a radio comes across the workbench, see you guys next time. <laughs>